Ah, see him a beast when he hear that sound like ah, Yeah, beat on the beat when he hear that sound like Ooh, Yeah, bitch and the champ only me one round like Ha. Yeah, me, I'm a G he in the hey, Scrap News, Jake Noworker here, and joining me tonight, Steven Peterson, who is fighting at UFC San Antonio March 25th. Steven, brother, great to talk to you. How you doing? I'm doing well, man. Just living a dream. And I see you well, you just mentioned you are outside of Fortis MMA. Uh I know that's a great gym. There it is. One of my favorite gyms in all of MMA. We'll get into that in a second. But first. It's been over a year since we've seen you in the octagon, dude. What's been going on? Uh, so I've been uh, building my promotion, my fight promotion, uh, doing some, you know, uh, kickboxing tournaments, uh, point Muay Thai, stuff like that. Uh, coaching the amateurs, kind of building the, the amateur program here at Fortis MMA and uh, building my my production company, Ocho TV. So just kind of dabbling in quite a few things kind of uh planting a bunch of seeds and uh and watering them in the meantime and staying in the gym staying active so uh i've been looking forward to making this return like i i didn't know i was gonna be off for a year but when i'm uh when i'm not fighting when i don't have a fight on the books i like to stay active at least doing something so uh yeah acting doing doing some fun stuff and staying busy geez man sounds like you've been very busy you say acting too yeah, I've done a couple acting gigs. A uh, movie called The Actor coming out later this year, and uh, and got some plan for after this fight. So just trying to trying to live a dream, man. You you only live once, so trying to trying to make shit happen. That's awesome, man. Any uh, any big name actors you're working with? I'm hoping to be doing this film later on this year with uh, Jesse Jess. So we're uh, we did a basically a table read. We did. Uh, I'm not going to say too much about the movie, but obviously it's, it's an MMA kind of movie, right? So, uh, yeah, we, we had our table read, and hopefully that'll get picked up by, uh, I think they're pitching it to NBC and some other some other people. So, uh, yeah, I look forward to more about that coming maybe summertime. That's awesome, dude, because last year, two years ago or something, Gina Carano and Donald Cerrone did one, and now we got Jesse Rose Clark and Steven Peterson doing one. That's awesome, man. Yeah, man, I mean... I hear fighters go well into acting. Like we translate well into acting because we're, we're good about being in the moment and just, you know, going on the fly and kind of adapting. So, uh, and then plus like action stuff, I've done some stuntman gigs and, and stuff like that in the past. So uh, I think it's right up my alley. I've, I used to, before I got into media and producing MMA content, I worked on like bigger movies. That's what I did uh, in my early twenties. And let me tell you, MMA fighters are, much realer than uh most hollywood people so i think that's why you guys translate we could actually take a hit you know so like yeah. <laughs> I see some of these actors they're, they're they're extremely dramatic and uh i mean like if i gotta take a hit let's go man like i'll take i'll take one for the fucking team let's go love it dude love it um you know year off and we'll get into some of that other stuff you mentioned in a minute here but are you very hungry to get back in the octagon I'm extremely hungry. Uh, this this is how I eat, really. So this is kind of what funds my other my other endeavors. So, yeah, I'm extremely hungry, and and I just can't wait to get back to work. And you're at Fortis right now. You train at Fortis. You do more than just train at Fortis. You said you coach there too. Fortis is known as the gym that like turns fighters' careers around, right? One of the best gyms. So many fighters go there start training there and they're a new fighter with completely different career trajectories afterwards. So tell me a little bit about your role at Fortis. It's kind of interesting that you, you put it like that. Cause that's essentially what, uh, what coach safe did for me when early in my career, I fought, uh, everybody really just everybody and anybody that would fight me, I was trying to fight. And, uh, so I'd fight a bunch of guys from Octagon MMA. Coach Safe was the the head coach over there, and uh, he built. I, I think they had like five fighters or something. And it was really early in the the sport, probably twelve years ago. I was fighting his guys, and uh, then uh, in a rematch with Matt Hobar, we had some uh, some drama there. We had a rematch, and I lost a majority decision. So uh, I was I was starting to think about it. All right, maybe I should go train with these guys they had offered me. Uh, but but I had like you know some ego in my head and shit. So I uh, 
So I fought him again, and then I guess Coach Safe had just – he had my number. He, he figured me out, and uh, so George Pakarayu, he, he laid me out, and that was like a real humbling moment for me, uh, both in my career and my personal life. Uh, I kind of, you know, hit rock bottom at, at, in my personal life and, and had to make a change. So I went to Coach Safe, and I was like, you, you figured me out, man. Like, so, like, you, you know my holes. Can you, can you help me fix them? And uh, so he took me in and, uh, you know, long story short, guys from around the DFW started, uh, you know, rather than trying to fight us, they started, oh, well, maybe this is the the place to go, you know, like, right. so, so over the course of maybe two years, uh, I'd say we went from maybe under 10 fighters to about 30 fighters out of uh, Octagon. And we kind of uh, outgrew that gym. So Coach Safe and uh, Darren Williams, they uh, purchased Fortis MMA and uh, we built it. Basically, Coach took me over here and uh, showed me the the middle ground where we have our kickboxing class. And it was piles of of mats and wall pads just all boxed and piled up, dust all over them. And uh, Popeye was down there just all wrapped up. And he was like, you guys are going to build it. So... We fucking got got to work, and about two, three weeks later, we had our first training session here, and uh, and then we, we made history. Yeah, then then we all made it to the UFC just like we had envisioned. It was like uh, we saw ourselves here, and we did step by step, and it made it happen. Yeah, man, a hundred percent. And you're now coaching amateur guys there. Yeah, so I've been a. Uh, it started off like I was kind of just an instructor, like, you know, kickboxing class, but mm -hmm. Muay Thai program. And I kind of built a, a good base of students um, coming in, just, you know, wanting to get some experience and uh, and giving them opportunities to compete uh, on the local level and build themselves up. So I managed a couple of guys and some place in the world. So, uh, you know, Coach Safe, we can go be around forever and uh, somebody's got to somebody's gotta continue to the biggest program and, and somebody's got to be there to pass the torch to so i want to be one of those guys i don't think i'll be the only one it's, uh, it's gonna be a, a a few of us sitting at that table because uh i don't i don't think any one man could fill the role that coach says filling for all of us i mean he's a legend across the entire sport everybody in the ufc knows him loves him the commentary table during every pay-per-view they're constantly praising the man so it's good to hear one of his uh close students so to speak is is giving him the same praise because he certainly deserves it and camp overall how's it been man because you got a big one coming up it's been good man uh my life's basically a camp i'm always in the gym like no matter how busy i get this is my like therapy from everything else and uh and then we got all these other guys training for fights so i'm always in the gym I, i've been ready for this because uh you know the last one left left a sour taste in my mouth so i'm just I'm just ready to get back to it and, uh, you know, make some, some things right and, uh, and get paid. Fucking get paid in this sport. Well, hey, man, Lucas Alexander coming up. What do you uh, what do you think about him as an opponent? Uh, he's a tough guy. You know, he's a Brazilian. He's uh, probably unpredictable. I'm sure he's got kind of those wild tricks. Uh, he's definitely a dangerous opponent. But uh, I think my experience is – you know, really long fight, and the longer it goes on, the, the more it hurts. Do you possibly have your finger over the microphone? Uh, yeah, do I? <laughs> it was a little muffled. That's all. You're good, bro. Um, uh, we're just talking the good stuff now. We need everyone to hear, you know. Yeah, so no doubt. You mentioned he's kind of unpredictable, um, or at least you think he's going to be unpredictable. That being said, can you at all try to like match up you two when it comes to your styles alone? Like, how do you think you match up stylistically? I think it's a dynamic matchup. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to say. It's hard to say what, how, how we match up without kind of giving away too much of a game plan. Sure. But I expect to go out there and take the fight to him. So there's not, there's not going to be any fucking waiting around bullshit. It's going to be straight to the action, and, and that's the way I like to fight. And it seems to be the way he likes to fight. So, uh, yeah, look for unpredictability on both sides. I don't know if you put any weight on this at all, but you're about a two to one favorite right now. Do you think, do you bet at all? Do you think anything of that? Um, shit, man. 
the odds that odds makers don't know shit, but in, in this case, <laughs> they're right. But I'm always the underdog, and it's like uh, I started as you know, it's 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 flopped around a few times. It started off with him being the favorite. I was like, really, like are people doing their homework, and then uh, it's it's one of those things. It's just unpredictable, and I think uh, a lot of my fans really uh, they're they're ready to go all in on me because because uh, I'm all in on this shit. So this is your eighth UFC fight, I think. And I'm asking this question because a lot of times it's a four fight deal. And if that's the case, this would be your second four fight deal. Is this the last fight in your contract? What's your contract looking like? I don't know if you can even talk about that. No, I'm on my third contract. Uh, they re-signed me before the Erosa fight. So uh, uh, this will be the second fight on my third contract. Uh, basically, I didn't fight either of my first two contracts out. I got to the third fight and then they re-signed me. I, that, that's what I'm you want to hear, dude. I'm a fighter's fighter, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, a, I'm a man's man. I go out there. I put on a show. Um, I'm a company man. So um, I just got to go out there and be consistent. I feel like I should be on a three-fight win streak right now. So in, in my mind, I'm on a three-fight win streak, and I'm about, about to go out there and make it four and then right some of these wrongs that, uh, you know, go out there, take a, get get my rematches that I need to, to get back and, uh, you know, get back in the – in the top 15 where I belong. You want that Arosa rematch? Cause I agree. That was a very close fight that could have gone either way. Yeah, I definitely want the Arosa rematch. I want the Caceres rematch. I thought I won that fight. So uh, yeah, those two, those two fights. And uh, you know, if uh, I go out there and do what I'm supposed to do, then I feel like those will be some big fights in my future and uh, potentially, you know, co-main event, main event type fights. I know you got to run here in like five minutes. We're getting to the end. Um, you're on an awesome card. Main event is great. Cheeto Vera versus Corey Sanhagen. Do you have a prediction for that one? How do you think that one goes down as a fan? <laughs> That's an exciting banger. fight. And it, it's hard to say because I'm a fan of both guys. Like uh, Sanhagen, he's so dynamic and I love watching him fight. Um, and, and Cheetah's a freaking OG. Like he's, he's just straight up. He's a real one. So, yeah, I'm not gonna pick sides on that one. I just hope they both. Uh, I hope they both get paid, and uh, I hope I get the the performance of the night, and they get fight of the night. Hell yeah, dude! Is anybody else uh, from Fortis on that card? Um, I'm not sure if they're gonna get Austin Lingo on that card. We're hoping to get him on oh, that card. For I think that's turnaround. official as of today. Okay, yeah. If they, if they made that official, I know we were working on getting him on that card, and. Uh, I'm not sure about Diego Fiera, but last I heard, he was supposed to be on that card as well. So it's kind of one of those sleeper cards that people aren't going to know about. Like, And they're going to be like, damn, this fight night card is really stacked. And you know it, it's in San Antonio. Is that – are you guys in – How? where are you guys in Texas? How far is that from you? We're, we're in Dallas, so we're about, I don't know, three, four, or five hours from San Antonio. Texas is a big state. But, yeah, it's a big state, but about, about three hours away I drive. Is that's still kind of like a home field advantage, kind of right? Like you, you guys still gonna have some buzz in the crowd? We're <laughs> we're gonna have a buzz in the crowd. You can believe that. Love it, dude. I mean, you guys always travel well, and as you yeah, know, we we got a good you know fan base out here, and uh, you know people that support me and uh, people that support the rest of the team. So yeah, you could you could look forward to seeing a lot of Forda shirts in the crowd, a lot of Ocho shirts, and uh, yeah, we're gonna show out. So I'm interviewing. Lucas Alexander on Wednesday. I never actually had the opportunity to ask a fighter this, so I'm going to ask you anything you want me to say to Lucas or ask Lucas for you. What the hell is he thinking taking this fight? He he knows what's going to happen. Say less, dude. I'll pass the message along, and then he'll probably get angry and hang up. That's fine, man. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> uh, you know, so, Steven, no, go ahead. Were you going to say something? I said, you know how it goes. You know the drill. Hey, man, I know the drill. I'm unbiased, but uh. I'm a fan of you, so, you know, I'll have some fun with it. But, uh, Stephen, you, you were talking a little bit about Ocho TV, your promotion, what you got going on. So can you kind of just explain your two uh, – I mean, I'm sure you have many side endeavors, but ex explain those two things for me. So Ocho TV is a multimedia production company. We do uh, basically commercials for some of my sponsors, trying to build those uh, – connections there since we're not allowed to like walk out with a banner and mm -hmm. do the stuff on our shorts anymore so it kind of led me building the the production company and uh working on a uh a documentary that's gonna 
you know, do a little, we're going to do a little red carpet premiere for the artists that are involved in May at our Memorial Weekend Fight Festival, which uh, that's going to be my promotion. We're, uh, we're promoting, uh, you know, mixed martial arts and uh, trying to get the community involved, get these kids doing the IKF tournament. And then in the evening, we're going to have the MMA fights. So uh, kind of make it a full day, full weekend uh, festival around martial arts and trying to get the community involved. So i uh, been working with the city of Grand Prairie and the Epic on that. And I'm really excited for, uh, for what's to come this summer. That's great, man. And I'll, I'll be in touch because maybe I could interview some of those fighters, uh, help promote the event. That sounds awesome. No doubt. Yeah, it would be awesome. So, Steve, before we get out of here, man, once again, I appreciate the time. I know you got a huge fight coming up and you got to go train tonight. I know there's going to be a lot of eyes on you, as always. Tons of fans. You're in the UFC. It's the big show. Anything you'd like to say to everybody? The mic is yours. I just want to thank everybody for supporting me all this time. You know, I've been fighting for 15 years, and it's been a lot of ups and downs. And uh, I'm just looking forward to to making this the the biggest rise and just going towards the top. And and I look forward to having everybody support with me. So thanks for all my training partners along the way and the coaches. And, uh, you know, let's do this shit all the way. Ocho, my man, thank you so much. Seven o'clock on the dot. I got you. But everybody, most importantly, Tune in March 25th, ESPN Plus, because uh, Steven Peterson going to get this nasty dub at UFC Sorry. San Antonio. Steven, my man, thank you again, and kick ass. All right, brother? Hey, thanks, brother.